we need to get to understand potential difference within a series circuit. So we're going to start by looking at a single circuit and we're going to see how the resistance of various resistors in that one circuit affect what potential difference there is across that resistor. So we're only going to have one circuit. It's going to have a 9 volt battery connected in series to the following components. A bulb, which is going to have a resistance of 10 ohms. A 1 ohm resistor and two 20 ohm resistors. Then, not shown in the picture, we are going to place a voltmeter across each component and see what the voltage across that component is, what the potential difference is across each component. Now you must remember that voltage means change in energy per charge. In the case of a battery, that voltmeter is going to tell us how much energy the battery gave each group of charge. But in the case of the other components, the voltmeters are going to tell us how much energy that component took away from each charge as it moved through it. So we could call the voltage that we read across the battery voltage in because that's the energy put in to the circuit per coulomb of charge. And we could call the voltage across all the circuit elements all the resistors, remember a bulb is also a resistor, we could call those voltages V out because they tell us how much energy those components took out away from each coulomb of charge out of the circuit. We open our simulation and here I have already built the circuit. What is the question that we are trying to answer? What is our independent variable? What do we vary between the treatments? Now, what is a treatment here? We only have one circuit. So you cannot take a circuit as a treatment because we only have one circuit. Our treatments are within the circuit. We are going to focus on different parts of the circuit and what is different between those parts that we focus on. And then we are seeing how that affects something. What is our outcome measurement going to be? I hope you can see that our independent variable is a resistor's resistance. We focus on each resistor in turn and the resistors have different resistance. And our outcome measurement is the potential difference across that resistor. So our question is, how does a resistor's resistance affect the potential difference across it? And then the description of the context is just to explain the single circuit that we are using. Four resistors in series in a single circuit with a 9 volt battery. What must be controlled to make this fair? Well, all the resistors are in a single circuit. They are all in the same circuit. So the necessary variables are automatically controlled. It's simply that we must have the same circuit. We've got 9 volts connected in series to the 10 ohm, the 1 ohm, the 20 ohm and the 20 ohm. So what do you think we are going to find? If we build the circuit and we go and measure the potential difference across each element, are we going to find the same reading across all of them? If not, which resistors are going to have a higher voltage across them? Which resistors are going to have a lower voltage and why? Let's prepare a table so that we're ready to put our data in when we get it. Remember our question question is, how does a resistor's resistance affect the potential difference across it for resistors in series in a single circuit with a 9 volt battery? So resistor's resistance is our independent variable, potential difference is our dependent. So how do we write the headings? Table showing the relationship between a resistor's resistance and the potential difference across it for resistors in series in a single circuit with a 9 volt battery. Our first column has the independent variable as its heading. Resistors resistance, the unit is ohms. The second column is for the dependent variable, potential difference across the resistor, unit volts. And then we look at our circuit to decide what values are meant to go in the first column and we see that we have a 10 ohm resistor, to be exact, it's a bulb. We have a 1 ohm resistor and we have two 20 ohm resistors. Now we need to go and do the measurements of the potential difference across each of them when we have a 9 volt cell. So we we go back to our simulation and we take the measurements. Let's first check the voltmeter reading across the battery and indeed it is 9 volts. Now across the first 20 ohm resistor, 3,53 volts. 
across the second 20 ohm resistor, also 3,53 volts. What do you think it's going to be across the 1 ohm resistor? Will it be again 3,53 or less than that? 0,18 volt, which is obviously less than what we got before. Now across the bulb. Remember the bulb's resistance is 10 ohms. So will it be more or less than 0,18? 0,18 is what we got across the 1 ohm resistor. 1,76 volts, which could be rounded off, by the way, to 1,8 volt. So we put this information into our table. For the 10 ohm resistor, we measured 1,75 volt across the resistor. That was the bulb. The 1 ohm resistor was much less than that. How much less? How many times less? Remember that this is rounded off. Strictly speaking, it would be 0,175. Can you see that is a tenth of 1,75? Since the resistance is a tenth. One ohm is a tenth of 10 ohms. And then both of the 20 ohms had the same voltage across them, 3,53 volts. When we compare the resistances, 20 and 10 ohm, 10 is two times more resistant than 20 ohms. So let's check. If we say 1,75 times 2, or we say 3,53 divide by 2, then as long as we just ignore slight differences due to rounding off, we can see that just as 20 is double 10, 3,5 is double 1,75. Now let's answer these questions before we go on. Pause the movie while you make a choice for each of the colored parts. The cell gives the circuit approximately 9 volt. We saw that because we measured 9 volt across the battery. And this voltage is shared between the various components, between the 10 ohm bulb, the 1 ohm resistor, and the two 20 ohm resistors. Which ones take most? The 20 ohms. Which one takes least? The 1 ohm resistor. Why is that? This is because higher value resistors take more voltage in a series circuit. Lower value resistors take less voltage in a series circuit. Now pause the movie while you make your choices here. Let's look at our data and let's open a calculator. Remember, of course, we do have rounding off issues here, which can make it a bit more difficult to see patterns. But on your calculator, if you write 1,75 multiplied by 2, you get 3,5. So if we would round this off, it would be 3,5. And so we can see that 1,75 is double 3,5 just as 10 ohms is double 20 ohms. Then if we compare these two readings, we can see that 10 ohms is 10 times more than 1 ohm. And if you take 0,18 and multiply it by 10, you're going to get 1,8. If you round 1,75 off, you will get 1,8. Actually, the reading on the voltmeter should be 0,175, but the voltmeter rounds it off to 0,18. But if we took the real reading, 0,175, and multiplied that by 10, we would get 1,75. So within rounding off error, the voltage across this resistor is 10 times more than the voltage across that resistor. Then the next thing that's interesting is if you add the voltages up, 1,75 plus 0,18 plus 3,53 plus 3,53 we get 8,99. Now again, remember there are some rounding off issues, but if we round off, we get 9 volt. In other words, what the resistors are taking out of the circuit, the voltage the resistors are taking out the circuit overall equals 9 volt, which is the same as what the battery put in. So have you answered these questions correctly? Pause to check your answer. The voltage across the first 20 ohm resistor is the same as across the second 20 ohm resistor, 3,53 volts across each of them. The voltage across the 20 ohm resistor is two times more than across the 10 ohm resistor. Within rounding off error, 1,75 multiplied by 2 gives you 3,5, which is in effect the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor. The voltage across the 10 ohm bulb is 10 times more than across the 1 ohm resistor. 0,18 volt times 10 gives 1,8 volt, which is 1,75 rounded off. The voltage which the bulb and resistors take 
back equals 1,75 plus 0,18 plus 3,53 plus 3,53 equals 8,99 volt. Rounded off is 9 volt. If there had been no rounding off at all in any of the voltmeters, it would come out perfectly as 9 volt. And that which the circuit elements are taking, which the resistors in the circuit, the bulb also being a resistor, are taking, that is the same as what the battery gives the circuit. So what is our conclusion? How does a resistor's resistance affect the potential difference across it for resistors in series in a single circuit with a 9 volt battery? Answer using this template. A mm with a greater what? Has a greater or a lower mm across it? For describe the context. A resistor with a greater resistance has a greater potential difference across it for resistors in series in a single circuit. Next, we see that all the voltage that the battery put into the circuit, the circuit elements, the resistors in the circuit, which includes the bulb because it's also a resistor, take out. The voltage removed by resistors equals the voltage put in by the battery. The sum of the potential differences across all the resistors equals the potential difference across the battery. So we can put that together. A resistor with a greater resistance has a greater potential difference across it. And the sum of the potential differences across all the resistors equals the potential difference across the battery. But that is all true only for within one single circuit. You can't apply this across different circuits as we'll see in another investigation. So we can explain that using this analogy. Remember that each blue circle stands for a coulomb of charge, a group of moving charge. Each red line stands for a joule of electric energy. The charges are busy moving, let us say, in the direction of conventional current, from positive to negative within the circuit, and from negative to positive within the cell of the circuit. As they move through the cell, these charges receive energy. The cell gives them energy. If this is a 9 volt cell, or to be more exact, a 9 volt battery, by the time the charges exit the positive terminal, each coulomb has 9 joules of energy, so the potential at that point is 9 volt. 9 joule per coulomb is 9 volt. If there are two resistors that the charges must move through in their circuit around from positive to negative terminals of the cell, then all of that 9 volt must go to these two resistors. One of the resistors takes some of that voltage and the other resistor takes the remainder so that the charges always return to the battery with zero potential. So all the voltage that the cell or the battery gives the charges, the resistors take away from the charges. And the more difficult a resistor is, the higher the resistance of a resistor, the more voltage it can take out because the charges have to struggle more when they go through the more difficult resistor. As they struggle more, more energy gets taken out of them, more voltage gets taken out of them. So the resistor with a higher resistance has a higher voltage across it than a resistor with a lower resistance. But when you add the voltages up, the sum of the voltages across the resistors equals the voltage across the battery because what the battery gives, the resistors take between them.